deja vu with our readings today. If you don't watch our little show, The Road to Concord, we tackled <laughs> everything but Joshua. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we were in it today. Um, so just real quick, let me set the table before I do the sermon, the teaching. So my walk in the way that we're in, you know, Hebrew roots, whatever we want to call ourselves, Congregation of Yahweh, about three years. I first come to it, and I led our little group here, and I was already on the way, but I've got here, and I've come into some things that were new to me, like our foot washing. And I've had a lot of questions asked of me privately with that. As some of you are learning, I'm a simple Marine. What's the rule book say? John 13, picking up in verse 1 and going to 17, it said, Now before the feast of Passover, Yeshua knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart from the world to the Father, having loved his uh, own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Yeshua, knowing that the Father had handed all things over to him, and that he had come forth from, uh, from the, uh, Yahweh and was going back to Yahweh, got up from supper and laid his outer garment aside, and he took a towel and tied it around himself. Then he poured water into the basin, and he began washing the disciples' feet, and wiping them with the towel which he had tied around himself. So he came to Simon Peter, and he said to him, Lord, you are washing my feet. Yeshua answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not realize right now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. And Yeshua answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no place with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Yeshua said to him, He who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, otherwise he is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew that one who was betraying him, it was for this reason that he said, Not all of you are clean. Then when he had washed their feet and taken his garment and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are correct, for so I am. So if I, the Lord, and the teacher wash your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example, so that you would also do just as I did for you. Truly, truly I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. So I got to looking at instruction manual in context total context notice one thing I found here this is not an ordinance being set up by Yeshua he says this is an example I know it's been suggested to me that what he was doing is ritual cleansing of the apostles before his crucifixion so that they'd be ready for service in the temple and everything and I'm not going to dismiss that but I'm going to tell you that the passage doesn't support that because if it did when Peter said my hands and head also Yeshua would have washed those. But instead, he jumps immediately into, if you've been bathed, you're clean. And you don't need anything but your feet washed. Well, that's reminiscent to me. For those who know me, that's one of the fireflies that goes off. The Pharisees came to Yeshua and they said, your, your disciples are not washing their hands before they eat. Ritual cleansing for the rabbis, right? And Yeshua says, it's not what goes in their mouth that makes them unclean. It's what comes out of their heart. Well, we see that mirrored and immediately go into the talking, Peter, you're washed, you're clean, but Judas isn't. Even though he was washing Judas' feet, and he's telling us that Judas is unclean, he's not setting up a ritual or, or a, uh, a sacrament of some sort for us. He goes on and he says, do you know what I've done for you? I've given you an example. And in their culture, that's one of the lowliest things you could do. That was something that a servant did for their master. It got me to thinking. I've been watching. Scripture tells us, be careful, because everybody watches us. We teach everybody by what we do and how we act. And I'm watching, and I've seen some people, and not just, you know, not necessarily in our congregation. You all have to understand who I am and what I do. I've got lots of people I deal with now, all over the world now. Charlie's starting to find that out. Um, I see them preaching, wash their feet, wash your feet, wash your feet. And that's the same person that's sitting on the couch shoveling the food in their mouth while other believers are taking out the trash, washing the dishes, laying out the food, asking one another, can I help you? Do you need anything? 
cleaning up the tables, putting the tables and the chairs back away, cleaning up the house, getting to the restroom. They're serving each other. But that, yet the ones that are usually yelling at me to make sure I don't get away from washing the feet or doing this or that aren't serving anybody. That's the yeast of the Pharisees there, being hypocrites. Speak well, you don't do it. So I'm reading this, trying to get some understanding out of this passage. What am I supposed to do with this thing I've just been in? There's no problem with doing it. Keep it right in your head and in your heart, though. It's an example of how to serve each other. Don't let it become legalism within your heart, because then you'll be in Yeshua's crosshairs when he tells you, you strain out a gnat, you swallow a camel, or plank, or however you want to put it. It's the principle he's trying to teach us. And it, it, you know, we can cut hairs, we can go into the Greek, and we start playing word games. But he's teaching us a principle of service. It's what I found. It's how it spoke to me. It's more than just washing feet. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it at all. I'm not teaching against it. Don't get me wrong. Which is what a lot of people do when they read the scriptures. They find one or two verses, and that's the end. This is the whole passage. Don't just find that one line about reading feet and quit. That's the whole context. Read the whole thing and see what's going on. And uh, if we do that more often, keep ourselves out of a lot of ditches. That's all I have for you. Short, sweet, simple little sermon, and it's in connection with our Passover feasts and celebrations. And uh, personally, I like the washing feet. I also want to find other ways to serve each and every one of you just to be as obedient as I know how to be. And shalom on that one. Do we have another song now? Yeah. All right, brother.